the specific pharmacy he's talking about. Oh, I'm giving General you, Hospital. Yeah, I, General Hospital is actually in Tema Central. And if it's a government project, he should be able to... Yes, speak. when you were uh, 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 MC. I never worked. At the General Hospital, I, Ashai Odamton, led the 40-bed capacity maternity ward. It's there. It's disability friendly. Okay. I led, I completed the 500 capacity morgue, which so, was just awaiting the uh, refrigerator. So hold on, hold on it's one minute. There. Yes, hold on one minute. Um, let me get to you, Ninoy. Yes, ma'am. Um, when did that pharmacy start? From the records I have, it was started under the previous regime. In which year? I think 2013 or 2014. 2013? Did it start yeah. in 2013? No, I, I was mayor 2013. No, Did it start no, in 2013? Well, my, my, PM, my, PM is here. my, my team of fact checkers will do the checking shortly. Okay. We will find out when it started and we'll find out its completion. And so we know who um, built that facility without uh, you know, ensuring that it's disability friendly. But let me just ask you this question because you know, this year we're ensuring social inclusion, equity and gender and persons with disability are very key to this year's ballot box. Now, we have consistently included specific programs for women in our country. In fact, many acts that are passed in parliament are passed and any time it comes to appointments, there's a special mention of making sure there is a woman as part of it. Now, that's because over the period, women have been marginalized against. Are you saying that all these things we have done in our country, for you, you disagree, and that it should be equal playing field for everybody, bearing in mind that some persons do not have those opportunities? So when I started speaking, I spoke about the fact that there must be equality in access to opportunity for disabled but people. But shouldn't that start first of all with making provisions for them, special provisions for them? So when you're done with the special provisions, then you open it so, up. So for example, employers would discriminate, number one, if they had two uh, candidates of equal ability in terms of the ability to do the job by virtue of the fact that they see um, a fiscal dis a f a, the fiscal disability of one over the other. All I'm trying to say is that both people should have equal access regardless of their fiscal nature. That's number one. It's, the access is number one. Then the other uh, opportunities that you can, uh, other incentives that you can add, especially looking at the kind of society that you find ourselves in where dis disabled people have been marginalized against in the past. But our, our laws today, um, I mean, abhor that any form of discrimination, whether uh, because of physical disability or religion or whatever, is against our, our laws. And therefore, I see that that line has been drawn. Access is where the problem lies for um, most of our fiscal challenges. When I say access, I'm not talking about fiscal access. I'm talking about access in terms of people giving them the opportunity in the first place. And therefore, and so. I'm not saying that um, if there are any other extra incentives, we shouldn't add it up. No. Incentives, yes, fine. But there should be equality in terms of access, first okay. and foremost. So that if the person has the ability, nothing should stop him. If, um, if uh, I mean, uh, let me use the word regular in quotes, a regular person has, has the capacity, why not? It, it shouldn't be that because a regular person has the capacity, and a, fiscal, um, a fiscally challenged person has a capacity, we should look, uh, overlook this one and allow right. that one. That one you'll be discriminating against the other as well. That's Thank what you. I'm saying. There must be equal Thank access you. from, Very much. from the um, Everybody, right. finally, in a minute. Yeah, when I, when I talk about um, equal opportunities, for me, my understanding is that that is the point that we should be working from. Now, we have to realize that equity which is what our responsibility is, is to make sure that we help others who do not have equal opportunity. We give them a helping hand. We can't deny the fact that people with challenges actually have more difficulty accessing the stuff 
than people without um, uh, challenges. So on that level, we can't talk about equal access in the same way. Equal access means that we make the effort to raise the conditions of people with uh, challenges. So that, that is where I think maybe I disagree a little bit. I think that we must put in incentives. So for example, just like my, my brother Ashai said, you have to put more um, attention to, to the education okay. and access to jobs. However, for me, the 2% and all of those things are quite meager. So when you have funds, when you have funds or a welfare fund to help people, maybe for startup businesses, there should be more directed at people with dis, uh, 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 challenges, okay. I hate to say disability, than for ordinary people because they have a harder time. Okay. So that's what I mean. I'm saying that we need to make sure that they all have access equally. Thank but you. that can only happen when you give them the incentives that make it equitable. Thank all you right. very much. Thank you very much, A.B. Bright. Um, we we'll go for our next batch of questions. And so, yes, um, let's see uh, those of you who want to ask questions. My team will be uh, coming over and be pointing you. Uh, Juvenu is on the ground, so he'll be um, coming to you to ask your questions. So you tell us your name, and then you go ahead with your question. So, um, yes, tell us your name, and then your question. Okay, my name is Abna Nyakwa, and this is a quick question to all the honorables seated. I want to know the plans for redevelopment of households in Tema Central. That's my question. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, redevelopment of households in uh, houses in Tema Central. Um, let's get to our next person who wants to ask a question. Thank you very much. You tell us your name, then you go ahead. Yeah, I'm Nanaya Ose from Tema Central. Okay. Uh, I, I'm very sorry about. Madam Ebi Bright, your, uh, your situation. But I would like to ask Honorable Ninoy, how many people of the disability that they have employed ever since MPP came to power? I mean, the percentage wise. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next question. Hello. Good evening. Uh, my name is Justice Kojosa. Uh, come again, your name? My name is Justice Kojo Sa. Please speak into the microphone. I, my name is Justice Kojo Sa. Okay. My question is this. To all the uh, aspiring MPs, we know the core mandate of an MP when he goes into parliament is to formulate laws. We have common funds that is allocated to them for smaller projects in their specific communities. Now, sometimes they tell us, I'll do this, I'll do that. They promise F, heaven on earth. Meanwhile, that is not their core mandate. So we want to know the specific job of a, an MP vis-a-vis -vis his or her common fund and vis-a-vis -vis projects in the communities. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Justice. Uh, we'll pick the final one. And uh, then we'll pick more of your questions. Yes, your name? My name is Ebenezer Tete Abladi. Okay. My question is directed to Honorable Ashai Odamtin. Somewhere in 2015, the market women and the traders demonstrated against him for imposing a cutthroat Please levy on them. for us. Thank you. Speak up a bit for us so we can hear you. Um, I'm saying in 2015, the market women and the traders demonstrated against Honorable Ashai Odamtin for imposing a cutthroat levy on them. For opposing what? Cutthroat levy. High levy on them. The market too. Yes, go ahead with your market question. Too. And then they came to him for, on several occasions to even bring the two down but he refused. This time around, he wants us to vote for him. How is he going to amend that situation between him and the market women and the traders? Okay, thank you very much. Um, to pick a final question, yes. Yeah. Go. 
Okay, yeah. so I think uh, we'll get them to address the questions. And her name is yes. Mabel Anawo. Okay, yes, go ahead. Ask the question on her behalf. She's asking that uh, why don't uh, Tama General Hospital have an interpreter there to help the deaf? Why? Okay, thank you very, very much. And um, so let's start with Odamton. So they say in 2015 you had some concerns, some issues. How do you intend to mend that relationship? Yeah, for the sake of our cherished listeners, I would comment on this. Uh, I don't recall any uh, demonstration against me whilst in office, but the specific issue You're about the market women in Tema never demonstrated against you. No, no. Or, they or came... you don't recall? No, I, I don't. I, I know what they're talking about. So, because... so what, what what is he talking you see, about? You see, you see. Oh, please, 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 please. What is he talking about? You had a situation where our survey indicated that shops in Tema were re-rented or sub-leased to market women between 150 Ghana cities and 300 Ghana cities. Out of that survey, we had our rate impose team to review what they were paying, which was average of 3.7 Ghana cities for the shops. And they sub it for between 150 and 300. I have the assembly's PRO here, and he can speak to this. So we increased it to 15 cities. I'm being specific. From the average of three cities, 75 pesos, to 15 cities. And then when you increase, what happened? And that's what they call cutthroat increase. You see, and when they, people... And, and, and after that, what, what did they do? No, they came to my office. We reviewed it, and it came down to seven cities. Did they demonstrate? I, I think they came to me willingly. There okay, was no. So they matched to you. But yeah, yeah, yeah. As a willing man. Yeah, they, they had a concern. Okay. I still believe that that was not fair to the people of Tema, that you would take government property at as, as low as seven cities and sub lease it to people at 300 cities and make the profit for yourselves. I say this, and that is the reason the past four years I was mayor uh, in my time. The MP was MPP, but as we speak now, the past four years, they have not been able to start a single infrastructure project. And that's why Ninoy sitting here cannot mention a single building that they have made disability friendly. This government can go on the rhetorics when they ask the question. Yes, please go ahead. Please continue. It, it, is, it, is, it is sad. It is sad that the questioner would seek to compare being a member of parliament with being a mayor. I am very clear in my understanding that these are two different roles. The common denominator is leadership. The common denominator is leadership. And okay. it is the leadership I bring to the office of MP, and I we shall make a difference in Tema. Albeit, we can refer to uh, Honorable Ninoy, uh, who laments leadership. For the past 24 years, the three, two, and three constituencies in Tema okay. have produced MPP MPs. So, uh, and so, uh, if there's a leadership MP. failure, yes. we can nail it right okay, uh, where great. it belongs. Thank you very much. So. Let me get to Ninoy. Uh, there was a question directed to you first and foremost. Uh, they asked, how many persons with disability have you employed? Thank you. I know that TMA employs uh, or supports a few uh, disabled people in Tema. I personally, within my small capacity and within my business, have a few disabled people or dis people with physically challenged people in there. I have family members who are physically challenged, whom I work with, so uh, it's not uh, something 
um, out of yeah, the but, uh, that's number uh, how, one. How many have you employed? That's the question. And that's why I said I work with them. So I have some within my, my businesses. So that's how, that's how many one. of them? I don't want to give a specific figure to that because oh, if you if you work with somebody, yes, you could I just have, say I, I don't run. I have. You could just say I have between this and that. No, but that's not a specific answer. That's, no, but at least it means that. So, it, hold on a minute. At least yeah. about three, about three. Three of them. Yes, about three of them. Okay. So that's fine. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two. Um, that's the that's the second question, and then the first question was about. So the first question. That was the was, second question. Um, that's the second question, but this was directed to you. So don't worry. Let me get to okay. the question directed to all of you. And I start with you, A.B. Bright. Um, so the first person asked your views on the redevelopment of houses in Tema. What plans do you have? And what's your take on how to go about it? Thank you very much. Um, there's been a perennial um, disagreement between the TDC and the TMA and all the structure about how TEMA should be developed. I'm not um, sure, very sure exactly what they mean about the redevelopment of houses in TEMA. Maybe the, um, they can be a bit more specific on what exactly. Hold on a minute. Um, yes, Honorable Adamson. Yeah, as a government, and I say this proudly, that the NDC's redevelopment agenda was a solid one. In the past four years, we have not seen any single completion of even old um, uh, residential homes. Uh, in our tenor, just across the street, we have the eight-story redevelopment plan. You go to Temaman here, the Neva Barracks, which was built under the first president of this country, now has a four-story, 16 uh, flat, 16 of them. You go to come to two, you have the BNI redevelopment project where we have improved the housing facility for our security agencies. And so under an NDC government, we have been intentional in looking at the Tema. The Tema is prime. Tema has uh, old structures. And cities that are made uh, sustainable are cities that pride themselves in numbers where you have a smaller geographic area, but housing a lot more people, so that you can leverage on transportation system, local economy, market size, and things like that. And so our, our redevelopment program beyond Tema, we can see them across the country, but specific to Tema, Comte 3, we have the BNI flats, community, uh, community one side three, side four, we have the TDC housing project. You go to Tema Newtown. And, and, and the truth is that NPP has not added a single redevelopment program within the Tema enclave. And that is the record. Um, let me get to you. OK, okay so I think something. that I understand yes. uh, the question a bit clearer now. We have a similar situation at the community, uh, in Community 4, the Kaiser Flats. My understanding is that the targets are only uh, buildings which have outlived their lifespan and they're looking to, to redevelop the area. However, a lot of um, the areas in Tema Central are still new and developing, like the 6, 10, 11, 12. There's a lot of new construction. The older areas already have very clearly um, uh, built areas that are just seeing extensions and stuff. So um, I think that this side of Tema doesn't have a lot of that except for this area, which has already been earmarked for demolition and redevelopment. Yeah. Ninoy. Well, having spent the last two months thoroughly visiting all the communities of Tema, I can tell you that uh, there are parts of Tema that desperately need redevelopment, desperately. There are some parts of Comte 4, Comte 7, Comte 8, Comte 9, where all the sewer lines are, are in fact, are out in people's homes. Um, the drains are dilapidated. In fact, Tema has outgrown, um, or I'll say the population has outgrown the capacity of the city. For me, 
um, a redevelopment of the whole tema is a possibility. It is not something that is out of the blue. Many, many other countries have done that, and it's possible. It will take time because some places in Tema, are, in my judgment, are not fit for human existence. I have to be honest with you. And that we have to deliberately make the effort to make, bring that change or that difference by rebuilding and maybe going up, just as maybe Ashai was alluding to, that we have done on this side, an eight story. Maybe we would have to look at that and uh, look at how to redevelop Tema block by block and eventually build a place that is fitting or befitting the people of Tema with better roads, better street lighting, urban rail, urban uh, buses, all that is possible. Um, it's not that, just as I was saying, others have done it before. Okay. Other societies have done it before. Even countries out of war have done it before. So it is not something that we, the people of Tema, cannot do. And I also want to chip in this, mm -hmm. that um, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, recently commissioned the National uh, Mortgage and Housing Fund um, project in, on the outskirts of Tema. It's something that we can also tap in to redevelop um, our communities. Because Tema and the people of Tema have sacrificed a lot for the people of Ghana. Um, the indigenous people themselves and we the people that are settled in. And so, therefore, I believe that in the near future, these are some of the things that we should be lobbying and pushing our government to do for the people of Tema. At least, if in the next ten, five to ten years, we're able to redevelop our city so that um, we can um, have a better quality of life for the people of Tema. I'm, I'm for it, and I'm prepared to champion and lobby for such opportunities for the people of Tema. Thank you. Yes, um, everybody, you want to say something? Thank you very much. No, I, my understanding was about ongoing uh, redevelopment uh, projects, so I apologize. And for the ongoing redevelopment projects is what I talked about the community for. As far as I'm concerned, as we speak, most of the developments that we're envisaging, just like my brother is talking, we're looking at the, the future. But at the moment, the outer line areas, even he's saying that the president's fund is talking about the outer parts of Tema. The, he launched a project for the outer parts of Tema. So at the end of the day, when even uh, Honorable Ashai was speaking, he was talking about these other sites. The residents of Tema Central and today, and the work that is within our ambit to do for them, needs to be realistic, needs to be within the purview of our mandate. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, redevelopment is only concerned with the Community 4 um, flat area. Now, if we want to talk about our sewage and our sanitation, then that is a whole different ballgame. And um, as always, these are issues that as MP, we must pursue on the national level. Because the funds for development like that are outside that of the mandate of the MP. What we can do in this area is to advocate strongly with your voices for the fact that it is an immediate and urgent concern. Okay. Thank you. But that's what I said. I said Thank I'm you. Going to lobby for that. To so, yes. Hold on one minute, um, because, you know, um, I need to, to get you to address a question, an issue that, um, you know, um, Honorable Ashai mentioned. He says that since the NPP took over, there hasn't been one single building that has been completed in the whole of Tema. Um, I see Honorable uh, Kofi Barakos joined us. He's the incumbent member of parliament for Tema Central. Now, they say you, and your party, the NPP, now in government, not a single block, in fact, not a square of blocks have been completed since you took office. Is that the case? You haven't done anything? Is it Ashai who is telling us that? Yes. <laughs> then I think you should also ask him, when he was the MC, what did you complete? I completed the Tema Mantedin School, two-story, 30 computer lab, a library, 32 washrooms, 16 bathrooms. I completed the Mexico two-story school complex, 12, uh, 30 computer lab, a library, 32 washrooms, 16 bathrooms. I completed my three-story education uh, uh, school complex, three-story. 
I completed Mantedin, and these were all done in 11 months. If this government is, is I can name a name as we speak now. The, the Tema Metropolitan Assembly Office is smaller than the staff we have. TMA has about a thousand staff. And so in 2016, we started a five-story huge office complex, which is behind the Zenith Bank. We got to the fourth floor in one year. Just four months to complete the project, NPP has been in power for four years. They've not been able to complete that project. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Honorable Kofi Yes, sir. He has mentioned the projects. No, I gave them a two-story uh, school block at uh, Republic. Two-story. Up to four uh, years, they've not on, been able to on. complete it. Let me get your honorable coffee back. I don't know of that, of that building that he's talking of at the Republic. I'm not aware of that. Yes, but you're not aware of that one. I'm not aware of anything at the Republic. So there's no building there, or there's, you are not aware? There's no building at Republic School. So he's telling us an untruth. He's telling us a big lie. There's no building at Republic School. Uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, is there any building at Republic School? No. I gave them, uh, they have not been able to complete. Uh, is there any building which is under construction? No. <laughs> it, it's, Yes or no? No. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please. Hold on. I mean, hold on. if, if yes. you don't mind, uh -huh. as soon as we leave here, we can go to Republic School. It is there. The school the is there. The presiding member of the Assembly and PRO, they are seated here. Ask them. So What so, I'm saying is that... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. So we will cross-check that. My team is here. We'll get you the details. Okay. Now, how many projects have you completed in Tema, in, including your constituency, for instance? I would say several. Now, let me start with the uh, Republic School that he just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Currently, we are working on two toilets at the Republic School. Two toilets at the Republic School. Now, at the Republic School, I built, I built a 30-seater computer lab at the Republic School. You built what? A 30-seater computer lab at the Republic School. Mm -hmm. And what else? At Tema, what do you call it? Uh, General Hospital. I built a maternity block at that place. That's the outpatient building at that place. And he's away. You built at, it? I built it. And at Community 8, number 3, at community eight number three, also I built a toilet there. They had a dilapidated toilet at community eight number three. I built eight, uh, eight number three. I built a toilet there. Uh, hold on, honourable Ashai, are you aware of all these things? Yeah, honourable uh, Braco expanded the antenatal care. Built it's actually it. the antenatal care, not the. So maternity. was that done in the last four years? No, in the, in a, during our time, um, the last four years. I don't know what, but what he's talking about was done during our time, and he did it. Good. Mm -hmm. But not the last four years. Not the last four years. So I'm saying that this current government, it, I'm, I, I don't blame Honorable uh, Braco, because whilst we are talking about redeveloping Tema and improving infrastructure in Tema, during my administration, we built 32 of 20 to 32 CETA WC facilities. 32 of them. Honorable Braco is struggling to mention even four toilets because his government has failed, not him. His government has failed. I say so because now they have an M uh, a mayor who is also MPP. So if you want to judge me as a mayor, then add Honorable Braco to the current mayor and they should be achieving more. Otherwise, I will even add the projects he did during our tenure to John Dramani Mame's legacy. Yes, sir. Um, are these projects you did in the last four years? Now, if he's talking about projects that we've done in the past four years, ask him when he's, he, left the off, he left office. In terms of roads, when we talk of roads, currently the whole of Committee 4 here 
is asphalted. When you move to committee 6, 10, 11, 12, we, we've managed to link up even 6 and 10. This was not done anywhere. Okay. In terms of road, we've done so much. Let me, let me ask him. Uh, is it true? Yes, I was actually impressed. Yes, he did. He, he done roads. And I've been personally impressed with the road network connecting Comte 6 to 10. And I'm also, I think that Honorable Braco, uh, he used the right word. We've done so much. I thought that he would have mistakenly said better. It can never be better. Because my predecessor and myself uh, did the best of asphaltic overlay across the map. From Comte 9 to Comte 1 market, from the hospital road to Comte 3, uh, Com Tamasco through Comte 3, this were projects. In Ashai, fact, Ashai, road Ashai, please, please, if you talk, if you are talking of asphalting in Tema, in Tema, nobody, 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 within the past four, four years, nobody, no particular government has been able to asphalt Tema than any other government. I'm telling you, because from committee two, all the way to committee to 12, we've done the asphalt. And you are aware. We did all the committee nine roads, okay. all the cemetery roads. No, the main road, okay. the okay. main road, well, um, all the committee nine roads. Hold on, hold on, hold on, on Honorable Bracco and Honorable Ashai. Uh, so that, then, uh, and so and that I, it doesn't, let, yes. let, me, let me just land. Yes, please land. You see, one major problem that we've had in Tema has been the sewage problem. Mm -hmm. It has been our sewage problem. And he was struggling even to make sure that sewer in Tema, as far as the sewer lines were concerned, he was not even able to do what I did during my time. Be that as it may, as I speak to you now, the government of the, 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 the current government has made sure that we have cut short for complete rehabilitation of the whole of the sewer system. Okay. Yes, uh, we have done that. Just so it doesn't and, become and, uh, and let me, let me a land. between the Let me land. Let me mm -hmm. land. He is aware that during his time, between myself and him, we tried and tried and tried to make sure that the Tema General Hospital will be upgraded. They didn't do anything about it. Today, as I speak to you now, Tema General Hospital is being made a regional hospital. And very soon, you are going to it's, it's, it's the pipe. Hold on, hold on. When you say it is being made, has work started on it? Honorable Barako, please, please, please. Honorable Barako, has work started on it? Oh, yes. I am in parliament. Oh, you have cut sword? We have cut the sword. Has the work, the work started? Has started? Yes. Where has the work reached now? Is that what? What have you done so far? I'm not a contractor. There's a contractor on site? He's on site, yes. Honorable Ashai, do you dispute that? I dispute that. I was at the General Hospital just a couple of days back. I walked through. In fact, when I got to the General Hospital, a nurse approached me, and what I needed, she readily did it because... Honorable Ashai, my question is, is that the case? I never saw a contractor on site, and no work is ongoing at the General Hospital. Have you seen any contractor on site? Have you seen any contractor? Okay. Uh, Honorable Brack, would you know the contractor? It's an Israeli company. It's an Israeli company. Okay. I don't okay. have the name in mind. Okay, hold on but one tomorrow, minute. Um, I mean, tomorrow, tomorrow mm -hmm. I can come and show you okay. the amount involved is 90 million euros. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, all of you. Hold on, hold on, Honorable Asha, Honorable Brako. Um, hold on. One, one, oh, please hold on, gentlemen. Please, please. Uh, let me land. Let me land. You have been, you, you, you still been, not, haven't landed. You've been landing for some time now. Uh, 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 so I, hold on. I, so hold on, hold on. You've been landing for some time now. Uh, please hold on. Um, so, uh, please hold on, hold on. I don't want to uh, make this a banter between two persons. So, one issue that featured strongly was the sewage system. Um, gentlemen, please hold on, hold on. The sewage system featured prominently when we gave you a chance to vote. How do you intend to address that? In fact, somebody 
you had the video, you, you yeah. watched the video, you saw the video, yeah. where somebody raised the concern about the sewage system in Tema. Thank you very much. And here, I really crave your indulgence, uh, Tema Central. The, what has just gone on is clear proof that over time, we vying for the office of Member of Parliament have created the impression that development is given by us. But there's a whole structure for development. And as they've clearly demonstrated, the MP must have a good relationship with the TMA structure, the whole assembly stru structure, and governance to bring development to you. So you need an MP who can work with everybody. That's number one. Thank you very much. This issue with the sewage, it's a situation that involves infrastructure allocation beyond the common fund. The common fund is just a pittance. It's only over about 80,000 cities. It can't solve the sewage problem. As in the Central. MP's common fund? The MP's common fund. My idea is that working with the whole structure of Tema Central, we're able to not only advocate, but bring actualization to a national, not only policy, but decided decision to intervene on the sewage problem of Tema Central. That is what a good working relationship can offer you. But we've just seen that it doesn't even matter if the MP is MPP and the government is MPP. That is no guarantee that the project will work. What guarantees it is a good working relationship. Thank you very much to um, Honorable Kofi Braco and Honorable Ashai for showing us that. Now, another thing which can happen is that we're able to engage the uh, private sector in partnerships with the community to deliver such level of infrastructural development. An example is the motorway no, expansion. The motorway expansion between uh, 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 MPS and the government of Ghana, that, that was what delivered that project. Okay. And it is because there has been enough advocacy and, and collaboration to get that project to happen. Okay. That is what can happen with the sewage. However, all, all uh, future governments are promising this. My party is promising to build, the, to, to build the sewage infrastructure, same as the MPP. My point is this, as far as Tema Central is concerned, we need our sewage situation fixed. Okay. Your MP is ready to work with anybody to make sure we get it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the sewage problem is already being fixed. It is not that it has to be fixed. It is already being fixed. The president has already cut short for a project to begin as far back as, in fact, just about a month ago, in the same Work private public, the, in the same spirit of public-private partnerships, we came along with Zoom Lion, if my memory serves right, Zoom Lion, to build a new sewer plant and to fix all the reticular sewer pipelines in Tema. So it's not that it's something that is going to be done. It is something that is being done. I was a witness to it. I was there and I saw what, what took place so, there. That's number one. So sorry, you have to ask. It is, an, oh, to, um, how do I put it? Development doesn't happen in a vacuum. It takes a while. It takes time. But it takes leadership that is prepared to lobby and fight for that change to come. That is, that is what it takes to make that, bring, that, bring about that difference. It, it is immaterial whether it's a, an, an, an MPP, MCE, or an NDC, MCE. It's immaterial. We, we go and lobby, fight, and make sure that these projects are part okay. and parcel of the government's agenda. And then it comes, it comes into fruition. So for, for me, you know, I'm prepared to lobby for more, including the redevelopment of them as a whole. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, yes, Anopola Shai. I, I Put speak, on the mask and speak. Don't worry. I, I speak from the point of pragmatism and not uh, rhetoric. We're talking about sword cut for a regional hospital. And you can just oppose that with the Dodowa District Hospital. We are talking about Tema. Yeah, we are talking about the commitment. Tema, Tema. We're talking in about delivery, not three. sword cutting, please. In, not Dodua. we are talking okay. about Tema. Why is that um, please hold on, okay, please hold on. Tema. Please hold on. Uh, 
come to Tema Community 3. Come to Tema Community 3. Mm -hmm. And you have a modern maritime hospital. Thank you. Is that yours? Oh, it's our administration. No, Sorry, no, no, don't, no. don't interject. The MAMA administration. Oh, 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 oh. That was private. That's a private. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think um, uh, we can't hear you. If Honorable Braco can just uh, give you his microphone so we can hear you properly. Um, yes, give me your microphone. We can. Yes, uh, can, can you hold on? Yes. Go yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised that my MP is talking about sword cutting that has just been done a month ago as something that is solving uh, the sewer problem. I was, a team, I was among a team, a delegation that was in Netherlands for the Ghana Wash window project. And that is what brought three consultants to look at the Thema sewer infrastructure. And that was as far back as 2015. You came to government, you abandoned what the people of Thema deserve. And it has taken you it has taken you even four years in your administration to now talk about cutting sword, not solving the problem. You look at, you look at the sewer infrastructure to as it is today, and we had, we had a work. Please go on, please go on, please go on. Yes, in TMA. We are listening to you. A similar case is the 19.2 asphaltic overlay that was approved for Tema. We, we did 6.7 kilometers, and the 13 kilometers uh, MPP came, and they never did it for four years. It has taken them this election year. Oh, I mean, the Brazilian facility that was asphalting. I'm okay. telling you, it, it's a 19.2. So, uh, gentlemen, hold on, hold on, hold on. We are ending this in the next five minutes, sadly. Yes, that's how time flies. So it's two hours already. We need to be bringing this to a close. Now, uh, Honorable Ashai, please I'll hold on. Right. I, okay. Please hold on. So in a minute, conclude by why they should vote for you as MP for Tema East. I have shown leadership in the area of education by providing the people of Tema modern educational infrastructure. I've shown leadership in the area of health service delivery and systems by building seven chips compounds at a 40 bed capacity maternity ward at the Tema General Hospital, uh, two community nurses within the Tema, uh, uh, Tema metropolitan area. I have shown leadership in the area of security under my antenna, seven police stations were built. One, the current divisional police station at Bartona was completed under my antenna. Thank you. I call on the people of Tema to vote massively for Isaac Ashai Udamton and John Dramani Mama so we can continue the people-centered, development-oriented, Thank you very much. Um, for our you know, people in Tema East Constituency. Thank you. Vote for, vote for Ninoy. A leader you can believe in. That's number one. A leader who is prepared and committed to lobby and lobby and lobby for development for the people of Tema Central. That's all I'm asking you to do for me. I'm number one on the ballot together with my president, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana. Vote number one. For Thank change, you very for much for growth. Amy Bright. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I still hold that the right way to lead is a people-centered leadership. So vote for an MP who is concerned about the interests of a people than in my personality. Number two, vote for vote for Abby Bright who is not interested in serving only a few select or opportunities for a few select, but for everybody. Number three. <laughs> Number three, vote for somebody who doesn't care 
about any other constituency okay. but Tema Central. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Very, very I much. I humbly ask for your votes. I'm number two on the ballot. God bless you. And so you Thank you. Thank you very much. All I can say is that Nana Ekufuado is number one. We want you to vote for all the parliamentary candidates in Tema East, Tema West, and Tema Central. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that'll be all from the Prisco Park in Tema Community 4 in the Tema Central constituency where this evening we brought you ballot box, which is um, brought to us with support from the Star Ghana Foundation, with funding from the EU and the UK aid. On behalf of the team led by MFA, Atia Mwaeli, Yao Forsen, my name is Winston Amwa. Thank you very much for being part of us, and thank you very, very much for being here.